Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video. It is Professor Drizzy here. We are going over Glaceon Vaporeon and Expand It. Just going to give you a quick deck profile here really fast. We've got four Eevee with the energy evolution. You attach the energy of whatever you are playing in terms of your evolution and automatically evolves into it. We are playing Glaceon and Vaporeon as I stated. Vaporeon GX is a new GX card, 210 HP. Hydrogen drops, allows you to heal 30 damage off. Hydro pump, 40 damage all colorless but as you put each water energy on it it will do 30 more damage for each water it has a cure shower gx which will heal all damage from all of your water pokemon glaceon gx has the freezing gaze ability shuts off all gx ex of your opponent this is helpful for shutting off those zoraks and tapu leles of your opponent which can be very helpful and uh, you sort of have the idea of to pivot to which one you want to play depending on the matchup. I like to use the Vaporeon as a last resort because we teched in a Wishful Baton. So at the end of the uh, match, you usually have a Vaporeon sitting there giving you the healing the whole match and then Wishful Batoning to it uh, potentially hopefully at the end of the match so he can do a high amount of damage because once you get five energy he really starts to be able to one shot pretty much anything that you have out there this is also new the evgx ascension dna basically lets you heal into something uh a different way so you don't have to attach the energy if you have it in your hand you can put it on him and you get to heal it all off so he sort of is an acer roll in himself without having to retreat so it is also helpful when you're in a certain situation so maybe you need to take a couple of hits the first two turns to get set up you shouldn't really have to because you have this and because you have this jirachi so you have seller wish ability look at the top five cards your deck reveal a trainer card you find there and put it into your hand then shuffle the other cards back in your deck that pokemon is now asleep so because he goes to sleep we have to run these skateboards to be able to get out this he is just so critical to making this deck work and opening up with him is pretty critical now we have escape rope in case we don't start with him as the active but we do end up pulling him with like a nest ball or something off of a off of a lily or a cynthia we've also got the switch as well uh, we don't need a full count of Ultra Ball. We only run three Ultra Ball. Uh, it's better to have the Battle Compressor to get the supporters into the discard pile rather than running something like Crasher Wake. Uh, Cyrus could be possibly all right in this deck as well. Um, it could it could disrupt your opponent. So maybe somewhere you want to try and find a way to fit in a Cyrus in this deck. Um, go ahead and try that and let me know what you guys think about it uh we have the two two line of vulpix nine tails luminous barrier because we're playing and expanded there's a lot of ex still and gx pokemon uh, are common you don't get a lot of single prizes aside from night march uh but night march would just probably tear this deck apart anyways because hey it's night march we've got four aqua patches here attach a water from your discard pile to one of your bench water pokemon uh, we have a computer search. This is better than like a Crash or Wake, because Crash or Wake has to be two energy that you have to get rid of. Uh, Sophocles can be anything, but Sophocles is sort of a draw supporter, but helps you out. Sophocles is better in standard. Let's leave Sophocles there. We'll put computer search in instead of Sophocles. We've got three Nest Ball that helps thin the deck and get like another Jirachi or get another Eevee set up, or maybe your Lolan Vulpix. One special charge to get back those DCE. And the matches in the video you won't see me use it, but I still think it's going to be helpful for swinging matchups and keeping the deck consistent from running out of energy. Uh, the switch we already talked about, we've got three copies of VS Seeker. Originally we were running two. Wasn't enough to get done everything we needed to do when we only run two Guzma. We've got two copies of Rough Sea, so if you do happen to have two Vaporeons, so that's 60 damage being, uh, being able to be healed off of your active there. And then you've got Rough Seas, and now that's up to 90. So that's another way that you can swing a matchup as well. You've got three Cynthia for draw support. You've got two Guzma to be able to switch and, and snipe something off of their uh, bench. you got two Lily. Uh, just some other draw support there. We got N as a late game catch up mechanic. You could probably put a Chorus in here as well. Maybe you want to get rid of the N. Maybe you want to lose a, a Cynthia or a Lily and put in a Chorus. That could be a possibility as well because Skyfield is obviously played and expanded. So that's another tech. Let me know what you guys think about that one as well. One choice band. This can help when uh, you've got Glaceon or maybe you've only got three energy on here. So it's only 30, 60, 90 plus the 40. So then you're only doing 130. You can go ahead and add a choice band. It's still not enough to one shot something. But the two shot on Glaceon is probably the better the better uh, opportunity for the use of the choice band. So you do 120, you get two shot for two, uh, 240 basically. So that's pretty good. And uh, at that point, you just got the four DCE and the nine water energy. So that's basically the deck profile in a nutshell, as fast as I could possibly give it to you. Uh, I don't want to belabor the point. So let's go on to into the matches. Let's see how this deck sets up and how well it can run here. All right, into the first match here.
All right, so I see that my opponent is playing the Fairy, Water, and Normal. So this could be that they're playing uh, Sylveon, Gardevoir with Swampert. The Normal type would be the Eevees. So we do see the Eevee, and we see the Alone and Vulpix there on the bench. I definitely want to play an Ultra Ball here. I'd like to get my Jirachi up. So let's Ultra Ball away the Aqua Patch as well as the Vaporeon. I really wouldn't need two Vaporeon because it's Gardevoir and the strategy with the Vaporeon is to load up as much energy as possible there. So because we have the switch, we're going to go ahead and switch into the Drachi. We can escape with the Drachi. And the reason I was playing the Ultra Ball to do all this is thin the hand to try to get as much value as I can out of the Lily to get set up rather than hold those cards. And here, it's going to be more valuable to get out the Glaceon because the Glaceon will be able to shut off Gardevoir's ability Secret Spring. So that would slow their energy acceleration and off of the stellar wish we don't see anything so that's a little unfortunate there we just have to pass our opponent at this point we want to save the rough seas at this point because rough seas will be more valuable since we only play two to use it when they play their wondrous labyrinth because we don't want to have to waste an extra energy attachment if we don't have to so they attach the fairy energy to their Eevee and the opponent puts down a frowny face and that does hurt for them because they must have prized both of their Sylveon. I would imagine hopefully that they're running a 2-2 line of Eevee Sylveon. But they still have the Alolan Vulpix back there and they did get their Wishful Baton down. Even though we're going to knock this out, they get to move their energy. So if they hit a DCE, they can still attack next turn. I'm going to go ahead and play Cynthia here. We find our Alolan Vulpix, we'll put that down on the bench. We get the 30 on the Vulpix. Okay, they do bench our Ralts there. And they hit their Alolan Ninetales. But they didn't have the DCE. They had the Wonder Wonder Energy. We're going to need to get our uh, Vulpix powered up since we've got our Ninetales in our hand now. We can go ahead and bench the EVGX at this point to sort of thin our hand, thin it out of the deck. And I feel comfortable dropping the Rusties at this point. I know I have the other one. And we're about to uh, get another prize in the next turn here. Because they've already got that 30 damage on them. The Ninetales will be able to do the other 80 for the 110 total for the knockout. And it's nice to be able to do the Frostbolt onto the Ralt still to soften it up rather than go right into hard retreating to the Ninetales. They're gonna attack here, but this is part of the reason why I put up the Rough Seas, hoping that it would at least stick. So the strategy that I'm doing here is actually to load this up because I know I'm going to have to hard manually retreat, but if I get the opportunity to take out a Ralts early at this point in the game, I'd like to do that over uh, hard retreating early just to get the knockout with the Ninetales. Even though the Gardevoir could potentially be the GX, it could also be the non-GX Gardevoir where they would be able to one-shot that Ninetales. So I'm just kind of playing a little bit conservative as well, since it looks like they're kind of dead drawing maybe at this point, especially losing uh, losing the opportunity to use that Sylveon in the opening to really help them get set up is kind of uh, very detrimental to their deck at this point. So they hit us 480. We're gonna heal that uh, off just a little bit. We're gonna heal off 30 damage there. We've got our DCE. So at this point we win the game right here because we're gonna be able to hard retreat 
into the Alola Ninetales and hit them for the 80 damage to close out for the knockout. And luckily they played the fairy version, otherwise I wouldn't have put down the rough seas because the rough seas would have helped them heal up and we wouldn't have been able to pull out that, that win so easily. So that's that first match there. That was actually uh, a little bit easy. Maybe we got a little bit lucky, but it does show you a little bit of how the deck is able to set up and still be able to uh, run pretty consistently there on those couple opening hands. I don't think I could have asked for a much better startup at that point. So here we see somebody playing Fighting Dark Fire. I'm thinking maybe this is Zorark uh, Lycanroc with maybe a Mag Cargo for the trading smooth over combination. Uh, it's a bad mulligan because now our opponent knows that we play DCE and we have a we have a Glaceon. Uh, so if they do run an E Hammer in their in their list, if they're playing Zorark, they definitely know when it's uh, when it's the best time to use that. And they know to try to use their, their Lele as soon as possible before we get a, a Glaceon set up. So that's, that's tough, but let's see if we get a little better opening hand. Well, this is not a better opening hand at all. We've got the Eevee, but we have three energy, two Vase Seeker, and Aqua Patch that we can do absolutely nothing with here at this point. I mean, we can evolve, so at least it stops them from being able to Tapu Lele for... Uh, Elm's Lecture, or uh, Bridget, or even a Lily or a Cynthia or something along those lines. So that that is that is pretty valuable. We don't want to go with the Vaporeon at least uh, early in this matchup because we we have a better we have a better chance of one shotting this Litten if we go with the Glaceon. We see them play a Timer Ball here. One heads, one tails. Now they can evolve because we went first, they can evolve on their first turn, so it'll take them at least one more turn before they're able to get that Incineroar up. And they they played Mars, so we do lose an Aqua Patch there. So Hoopa GX come down from their hand, they play a Nest Ball here. What if they play the Shining Legends, because I was thinking it was going to be Zorark, but um, we are going to shut off the ability of the Incineroar. So that is going to slow them down a lot, and I, th I think with just being able to shut off even the Tyranitar GX's ability and the Incineroar, that they're not going to be able to accelerate energy and play the deck as fast as that they like, uh, as fast as they would like to. See the Alolan Volpix. We can kind of save that at this at this point right here, and uh, at this point, since we already played that Lily, we can't do anything else. Now next turn, we can attach another energy via Seeker. And uh, maybe Lily for four. Depends what we get off the top of the deck. So now they hit, they did hit their rare candy. They've got Incineroar up now. And the Poison Barb is interesting because they only do 130. I'm, I'm wondering why that. Because even with one tick attacking into him, it's... I don't. Th I mean, that would be 140 and 150 after it ticks after they attack. I don't think Poison Barb is the best tool for them. I mean, as a stage two, the only other thing is a is a choice ban. 130 is already enough as a two shot, right? I guess that's the only valuable tool. I maybe. Counter gain would be a little bit more beneficial in their list. I'm thinking if they fall behind, but with that with that um, scar charge, they're gonna get the energy up no matter what. Though it seems like that would be fun. I'm not really sure if maybe maybe they could be better suited for something else other than that. You know, other than the poison barb. We see a rare candy. We see Tyranid, uh, Tyranitar GX come up with that uh, lost out ability. So that ability is shut off. So. Uh, maybe they were mistaken. They didn't realize that that was going to be something that they were going to be able to really uh, take into consideration there. Let's play this Cynthia here. We get our Lola Ninetales with the Luminous Barrier up. So that's good. Because when our when our Glaceon goes down, it does have the Wishful Baton. Hopefully we go down to damage and not a Poison Tick. And I go ahead and get the Eevee 
uh, GX into a Glaceon because I don't want that EVGX to get one-shotted because he has some things that can one-shot easily 160 if he gets the Hoopa up. He promotes the Litten after we knock out the Incineroar. And he drops down the Guzma. That's disappointing. See, I was holding the Vaporeon and I could have I could have transformed that into the Vaporeon. But I don't think that would be necessary at this point right now. Because he's playing ability based, it'd probably be a little bit better here to just re rely on freezing gaze more so than relying on the additional healing. So he plays Incineroar, uh, Incin or, or I'm sorry, Hoopa GX's first attack to where he can get any two cards in his deck here. And we're gonna attach the, um, let's see here. Let's play this Nest Ball first. I think I probably want to grab this Jirachi here. We'll just thin the deck at that point. I don't think Jirachi is going to help me in this matchup. Jirachi is a little bit more for uh, for starting, you know, for getting our consistent uh, consistent start up here. So we'll go ahead and uh, we'll put 90. We'll put 90 on the Hoopa GX where we'd be able to knock out this Hoopa GX next turn. We start softening up that Tyranitar GX for late game to be able to knock him out. Is even if he gets up another Incineroar on the bench, he's not going to be able to use that ability. Now, we see the Shining Legend Hoopa come out, which is a good tech for that deck. He's going to be able to do 160, and he's short of a knockout here, which is a little disheartening for him because we're going to be able to get the knockout here. We do have our Alolan Ninetales powered up, so we will be able to go after his Shining Legend's Hoopa. Um, we could... We could have taken an extra knockout if we played it a little bit differently by putting 30 damage on the Litten last turn and 30 damage on the Litten this turn. We would have actually been down to two prizes. Uh, I did misclick though. I meant to I meant to put the 30 on the Litten. That way uh, I could, even though I'm not going to be able to hurt this Hoopa, I'd still be able to get another knockout. And because it's on the fire type Litten instead of a dark Pokemon, I would be able to still take a prize because Black Market Prism Stadium is up at this point. But what I do here is I attach the energy to the Glaceon because I'm doing a hard retreat. It's activating Aqua Patch, so I can pretty much just get that energy right back. Now I don't want to put that. Uh, I don't really want to put the energy on to the Vaporeon right now because he's hurt. So we're going to do it on the fresh one because we have the Wishful Baton there on that Glaceon. If he does go down, we can move those energy to the other Glaceon and he will be fully powered up and ready to attack. We swing into the Shining Legends Hoopa for 80 damage and it just shows you how that Wishful Baton is so clutch in this deck list for being able to move those energy, especially even onto like the Vaporeon in the late game, powering up it so it does a ridiculous amount of damage at the end of a match. He gets his Incineroar up, and because we have the Ninetales in the active, he is able to finally do his Scar Charge. Now, we have to keep into consideration he had three energy already on the Hoopa GX. He's got one here on the Shining Legends Hoopa, and I believe he had three on the Hoopa GX. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven energy so far that he's played. So I wouldn't imagine he has much more especially with uh, prizes he is just getting two prizes at this point right now though so if we knock out this Hoopa he may be very hard pressed to find more energy imagine they play 12 this, uh, yeah see we wouldn't even be in this situation if if we had put the 30 damage each time onto the Incineroar, or the Litten, I'm sorry, rather than the uh, Tyranitar and misclicking and putting it on the Hoopa. Now, that's where this Ninetales becomes so valuable because even though we sort of had a little bit of a misplay here, we are able to prevent ourselves from being knocked out. 
Now next turn we wouldn't we wouldn't technically get a knockout unless we unless we manually retreat here. He puts another energy onto the Shining Legend Hoopa. That's eight energy at this point. Now we have a we have a DCE for the Glaceon. Let's see if we if we retreat, we only do 90. It only puts us at 200 damage on him, and we would have 50 to go. So it's probably better that we attach to that Vaporeon. But you know what? Let's uh, let's just keep things as they are and have multiple threats here. So instead of just charging one up all the way. It's probably better to be flexible in this sort of situation and keep the keep the Glaceon able to attack because we could we could even Guzma for the um, the Alolan Muck even though that Muck doesn't do anything against us in this matchup it's just because we're trying to find the rough seas if we don't find the rough seas it makes this matchup a little bit more challenging. I don't think that the Incineroar deck is the most uh, competitive deck, but that Scar Charge does really help it get powered up to be able to do a lot of damage really quick. And even though it takes 30 damage to be able to do that, 220 is still a lot to be able to take out uh, effectively. And especially when they're able to have the Black Market stick for as long as it has stuck around, we would have technically got uh, an extra prize and already been down at two prizes and been looking at loading up the uh, that Vaporeon with the Guzma in our hand at this point to really go after that Tyranitar GX for the game. But when we knock this Incineroar out, if we don't bump the Prism Stadium, we're still going to have to deal with the Shining Hoopa eventually as well if that becomes, that becomes a problem. We've got Vaporeon down, we can do some healing. Uh, the Drachi is nice, but like I said before, it's more for starting up. I guess we can go ahead and play him though, um, because we may need to find some aqua patches and things of that nature. We're gonna play Sophocles here. Now I end up, I end up getting rid of these uh, Ultra Balls because the Ultra Balls are not valuable once we're already set up at this point. And you can see we have four Ultra Balls in the Sophocles, and later you'll notice that. Uh, this is something that gets cut from the deck. So we cut the Sophocles and we cut an Ultra Ball to go for a Battle Compressor and a Computer Search because Computer Search can do what Crasher Wake did as well and Crasher Wake was cut as well um, because it just gives us more freedom and more flexibility. So say we had the Computer Search instead of the Sophocles. Well, we could have found our Rough Seas and we could have bumped the Stadium like a turn or two earlier, right? And with this Glaceon up, we can we can uh, knock out that Hoopa, or not the Hoopa, the Incineroar back there. Got these dark Pokemon uh, keep getting all mixed up in my head for me for whatever reason. Go ahead and bump his stadium again because we don't want him to get a free retreat option and do some sort of Guzma tactic here. Uh, just going over the math, we know we're going to get two prizes and we just need to get one more prize. So they forced us into getting quite a few... Uh, extra prizes that we shouldn't have even had to take and we sort of misplayed a little bit which put us at a disadvantage to have to take these extra prizes as well we technically would have gained would have won the game if we would have uh put our 30 damage each time onto that litten so it's important to take those things into uh, consideration try to take a little bit more time sometimes it's it's a hard under that pressure but when you look back at these matches like this you can really analyze things you can really see some things that uh, weren't always available to be seen uh, when you were playing them out so that's a victory there that really shows how when you do go up against the deck that has the ex or the gx when you're shutting off those abilities it is so very critical and can swing so many matchups because they don't really expect that to happen for you So on to this other match here. We see we're playing water as well, so this is sort of a mirror match sort of thing here is what I'm what I'm guessing. I'm imagining this is probably either that they're playing Glaceon, or maybe they're they're also playing uh, some form of 
could be Greninja, maybe a Lapras, like Turbo, since we're in Expanded, they could be running Max Elixirs, Lapras, or something along those lines. Maybe Gyarados in Expanded. It's hard to see. I, I didn't see them take a mulligan. I didn't really see anything here, but I think this is a pretty good start because we've got the Jirachi. We've got the Eevee on the bench. We'll get to put our water energy on. We'll get to evolve. As soon as they flip over what they have, we can see whether we want to go with Vaporeon or whether we're going to go with Glaceon here. Oof. This is going to be quite difficult because they're playing the Crystal Ray attack on the Glaceon EX and everything except for our Eevee GX is an evolved Pokemon and we don't have a way to attack with Jirachi. So I did have a pretty good starting hand there, but now it's a little bit different because they end. They put down their Alolan uh, Vulpix, which means that they're definitely playing the Luminous Barrier as well. We have a Nest Ball in this opening hand. Nest Ball in this sort of situation, I would just go with getting our Vulpix out as well. So we can set up later to prevent those Crystal Rays. We might end up in a situation where we're just banging our heads against the wall against one another because we're going to be able uh, to block each other's attacks back to back. Uh, I go with the Vaporeon in this situation because I feel that it's better to one shot something at least in the early in the early stages of what I'm trying to do here is establish enough energy to go after the Palkia and the Tauros. So the Tauros, if I if I don't one shot the Tauros, he could GX by dropping a DCE onto the Tauros and Mad Bull GXing me. The Palkia, I don't want to come at unless I'm going to one shot it because of Aqua 2 being able to accelerate energy and we don't want him to have an extra turn to be able to attach manually and then aqua tube two more energy onto pokemon so he gets the dce he's set up pretty nicely here by playing the skyla he's gonna have uh, a pretty good chance to get another card that's going to swing this in his favor. So he puts down the Fighting Fury Belt. He goes from 170 HP up to 210 HP. His Crystal Ray is doing 80. So we're going to have to pray that we can find our, our uh, Nine Tails here. And since we have the Ultra Ball, we can go ahead and get rid of the Crasher Wake and we'll get rid of an Aqua Patch because we do have the Wishful Baton as well. So now even though he's going to Crystal Ray and prevent any damage from evolution, we have the Luminous Barrier so he doesn't hurt us. But swinging back into him if we were to retreat isn't going to help us. We hit, uh, we grab our, our Cynthia back out of the discard uh, off the VS Seeker. We get a new hand here. We do find another Jirachi. It's going to be helpful. I definitely want to put this uh, Jirachi down. I want to want the Eevee. The Eevee is going to be the most critical thing in this matchup because it's going to be able to kill that Glaceon. But the problem is we don't play a Field Blower in this match or in this list. So part of the thing is if Eevee only does 100 damage, that's three shots. We have to swing into this Glaceon three times. Don't really want to do that. Don't want to have that happen. Um, but we do have a water energy here. And I'm debating the placement of where where I really want to put it. We could Guzma to try and stall by also uh, getting an opportunity to uh, wishful uh, Stellar Wish, I'm sorry, I was thinking Wishful Baton. And uh, they would have to drop a DCE. Actually, it's a three energy uh, retreat cost on Toro. So they really have to play a Guzma to really get back in this or a switch, right? Escape rope, something along those lines. So now we've got two energy on our Ninetales. He's set up there. He's got the Wishful Baton. So if he does manage to get killed by something, which I don't know what would kill him, there's no threat on the field at this point. And since we Stellar Wish, we have the Lily in our hand. We can Luminous Barrier here. Or I'm, I'm sorry, we can uh, Aura whatever 
or a strike, whatever, whatever it is. 80 damage onto the Tauros. But the Acerola, wow. It's as if this guy's got an answer to everything that I do here. Wow. Okay. Okay, so Crystal Rays, I still can't attack here at this point. Um, the DC is nice. It would have been nice a turn earlier. A couple of turns earlier that would have been nice, but uh, regardless, we have it. But we have an escape rope. Wondering if escape escape rope would be nice because escape rope resets the crystal ray, right? And we can put some damage on something else. Obviously, we can escape rope into our Jirachi and then escape board retreat. And we can get a card off of the top of the deck as well. So let's see here. We don't want to play Rough Seas in this matchup. Rough Seas is only going to help them out. We've already got an Ultra Ball in our hand, but I want to get this out of the deck at this point. So I can I can play Sophocles, and I can Sophocles away the uh, two Ultra Balls. And what I can do here is I, I can at least get a knockout, right? I want to get a knockout and get some prizes. And... Uh, Try to find more strategies to play around this, right? We need just more than one Guzma. We need VS Seeker. That way, if we drop the Guzma, since we've already played one, we only have two, that we have the VS Seeker to get a return Guzma again. He's starting to power up the other Glaceon EX, which is a little bit uh, frustrating here. We had a decent hand set up with pretty much anything we could really possibly need here and it gets end away. We've got to balance getting this EV set up as well as setting up the Vaporeon. So there's a couple ways to go about this. So. We could, since we're at five prizes, we need to somehow kill this Vulpix. Maybe he doesn't, well, he doesn't have it in hand. He puts it in his hand, which doesn't make sense. He's going to put it on the other one on the bench, which makes sense. But um, we're going to go ahead and get the knockout here, which is, which is good, right? This is good because there's nothing else that can hurt this nine tails. The reason it's bad is because that's going to become another nine tails and we don't have another way to get another prize here except for he does put down the Froki so he even fits a Greninja line in here and I, I know it's going to be Greninja GX it's not going to be not going to be uh, the break we want to power this up see because I have the wishful baton here the energy attachments that I've done were pretty accurate. The, these have been very accurate energy attachments because if this goes down, which he's very, very safe at this point, I don't see him dying anytime soon, is because I can Wishful Baton that onto the Vaporeon. We've got 30, 60, we've got 120 plus the 40 on Hydro Pump. We've got 160, right? That's not 210. We'd need what? Jeez, three more, three more energy, right? We need seven energy, I think. Thirty, sixty, ninety, one twenty, one fifty, one eighty, plus the forty. Yeah, we need, we need two more energy to be able to do some sort of Guzma play onto this to be able to knock it out with a hydro pump. I can see what he was trying to do here with this strategy is to put those damage counters on the nine tails. That way his nine tails would be able to come up and get the knockout here. Okay. That's that's pretty cheeky. That's pretty clever there. It does, it does force him to burn a DCE, but this guy has another DCE in his hand right away. So this is a very, very, very interesting and very uh, 
methodical matchup here. Normally, if I if I had a balanced basic and evolution deck, this would be a little bit a little bit less of a challenge. But uh, regardless to say, I think the guy's deck is very interesting. Uh, he does a counter for almost every sort of thing that we have in our deck, and this is sort of one of the things that I really like is when we when we come up against a matchup like this where we do have like sort of this chess match between uh, an opponent. You rarely ever come into these sort of matches where it's this uh, where it's this strategic and it's this methodical. Usually things are very uh, very clear cut for a decision on how to win. So I start worrying about getting the other, uh, the Vulpix powered up because I'm going to need another attacker to kind of keep my, my tactic going here with what I'm trying to do. Now I have four energy on the Vaporeon and we can go ahead and get the fifth one. So now we have the fifth energy on him. We just need one more energy on him. We have a DCE for the EV next turn as well. We're going to go ahead and we're just going to promote this EV to sacrifice it at this point. Because we have the Guzma, because we have the Guzma, we can actually, uh, we have our GX attack as well that we could go with, uh, let's see, how would we want to do this? If we Guzma, if we Guzma here, because I'm thinking about the GX attack of Glaceon. If I put three damage counters, it does 150, right? But I have to pivot to be able to do that. That's the thing. So I have the Guzma here. Um, The Greninja wouldn't be the right thing. Um, let's see. But but the the other guy's at 170, and we got. We have 190 with Vaporeon. We should just go with uh, Guzma onto the. We should just go with the Guzma onto the, uh, and you see me going, going for this here. We should just knock this out with the Vaporeon. That should be the play. Cause even though he does 80 damage with the Crystal Ray, we can heal it off with Vaporeon's ability. But, uh, this is, this is a misplay here. So we misplay here because we could technically have got a knockout on this if we went into the Vaporeon. But what I'm thinking about is also trying to set up the GX attack because we still need to set the GX attack up as well. So now that we have the 30 damage on the Palkia, if we are able to, we can VS Seeker, we can Guzma into the Jirachi. Jirachi will come into the active, we can retreat, we can bring up the Glaceon again and we can GX and knock out the Palkia GX. I see the strategy here of why I did this because it also allows me to Guzma to hit that Glaceon one more time. But the problem is uh, we only have at this point in the deck the two Guzma and the two VS Seekers. So that puts us at a disadvantage here, right? Because if we Guzma up and use Glaceon to knock out this Glaceon EX, we don't have a way to get that Palkia up and we will have no other way. We've used our, we've used our escape rope, I believe, and we've used our switch. We've used all our goods. So we're really at a, we're, we're really at a critical spot because what we could have done what we could have done here was go ahead with just knocking out, just knocking out this uh, Glaceon. And then it still would be in a tough spot. I think we've played both VS Seeker as well as playing both Guzma. 
but nonetheless we do get we do get a knockout here. Let's see what we get off these prizes. That's not very helpful, but we do have the Eevee. So while while things while things aren't all bad, and we could have even instead of having to two shot, right? We could have put 30 damage onto this Glaceon EX as well. So this is not necessarily a misplay because you'll see in the end that we do still win this matchup. I still don't think there was any other way that our opponent could have played it. I think they played it as best as they could have. And we see we have enough energy now to one shot it this one with the Fighting Fury Belt if we happen to have another Guzma or VS Seeker. I think I'm unaware at this point that there is no other Guzma and there is no other VS Seeker in the deck at this point. But if we were to put the 30 onto the Glaceon EX, then when Eevee swings for 100, now it's got 130 damage. And if the Crystal Ray, it only does 80 damage, right? Uh, they, would, they would possibly be able to bring up Palkia though and knock us out or uh, maybe even Greninja for the 110. And so that would that would not necessarily always be the most uh, secured way to earn the victory either. So what I do and how I pull this matchup uh, into a victory is a little bit surprising given that we we did misplay, right? Because we're we're short two prizes. And we could have we could have got those two prizes if we if we would have just put if we would have just put um, if we would have put the damage on him. So now we got a hundred damage on him, right? So at least we've got that. Now I don't think Palkia is able to get the knockout. If he is, we'll see him retreat into Palkia. That's still not the game though, right? That's still not the game, because if Palkia does come up, then Palkia dies, right? So if he does if he does promote the Palkia to kill the Eevee, then he would lose the game at that point. So he has a muscle band on, so he's actually gonna be able to do hundred damage with the aura beam here. Which is a little uh, a little disheartening, but you see I have the 100 damage on me here. We lost a couple of frames here in the video skip, so um, Streamlabs, Streamlabs sort of crashed. So I, I opened it back up and we're, we're recording here again as much as possible. We use that Joymaker GX and boy does this bring me joy because we get back our two Guzmas and the Alolan Ninetales. We don't necessarily need the Alolan Ninetales, but we'll see here. Um, Okay, well, I was hoping I would be able to put the Alolan Ninetales on him just to prevent ourselves from uh, something like this happening next turn and him uh, potentially bringing, bringing this up somehow. Um, so he's going to die, but that doesn't matter because we can drop the well played, flash the Guzma, extend our hand, and say, good game, because we're going to promote the Drachi, and then we're going to Guzma into the Tauros. We could even Guzma into pretty much everything on his board except for maybe... Um, the Greninja, I'm not sure, I think Greninja's 230, but let's see, I think we're hitting 250 now that we've got the 7 energy. I think we would we would pretty much be one-shotting anything on board. Let's see how much damage this does here. 250, and boom, there it was. We, we could kill anything, so that's where having the Vaporeon at the end is so critical.